Look how easy it is to make projection mapping in After Effects. In my previous projection mapping tutorial, I showcased the example of the impossible coffee shop. Although it was based on the same technique I demonstrated on my other cases, a friendly commentator wanted to know more about the details. So friendly commentator, if you're watching this, this After Effects tutorial is for you. This is the original coffee cup shot in full length that I shot with a higher shutter speed for a reduced motion blur to cover up later jump cuts. After I put the cup onto my tablet, I froze the camera movement to plan my next move. I then made a gesture of grabbing the cup, but instead smashed it out of the camera view. I reseated my hand for a clean view, moved it back to the original position, and repeated the smashed what? gesture. When shooting your own videos, it's important to have enough points to track, like the markers on my tablet. In the edited version, I extracted the frozen part of the shot to get a continuous movement of my hand. But when we go back and forth at the cut, we can clearly see the jumping. But the choppy style created by the higher shutter speed made it less noticeable during playback. For the projection mapping, I selected a frame as a reference frame for freezing that was the last frame just before my hand overlapped the cup. I went to the next frame and set a marker, proceeded a frame further and split the layer there. Then I looked for a frame with a cup already removed and that had a similar hand pose. At that frame, I set another marker. Then I trimmed this layer to that marker and shifted it back until both markers aligned and the hand movement seemed to look continuous. By the way, this didn't always work perfectly, so my advice is to shoot multiple takes like I did and if necessary combine the best parts. To make the cut more seamless, I set the blending mode to difference and repositioned the bottom layer until the tablet and the table matched, indicated by the color black in difference mode. You don't have to worry about the occurring gaps at the borders, because we can crop the composition or scale everything up later. Then I duplicated the bottom layer, froze it one frame before the marker, trimmed the layer start to the playhead and extended the layer end to the end of the timeline. I masked the cup, selected the layer above and extended it by one frame back because I wanted to start the camera tracking here for a better transition. In the tracker's advanced settings, I recommend to check detailed analysis. And after tracking, I looked for a frame where all tracking markers were visible. Then I selected the according tracking points and created a solid and a camera. Next, I put the frozen cup layer on top. Now comes the super easy projection mapping technique that I showed in my previous After Effects tutorial. I made sure that the solid had the same aspect ratio as my footage, which was 16 to 9. I rotated the solid, scaled it up and repositioned it until the cup was completely surrounded by the solid. Then I looked for CC power pin, applied it to the cup layer, dragged the pins to the solid's corners and zoomed in to do it precisely. I copied the solid's position, scale, orientation and rotation values, made the cup layer a 3D layer and pasted the values into it. And here is my secret. I checked on stretch and the cup was magically projection mapped onto my tablet. But there was a big jumping at the cut because the real cup actually had a different position. To fix this, I looked for the transform effect, put it before the CC power pin effect, set the blending mode to difference and adjusted the anchor point values until the blending was completely black, which was a 100% match. I applied a grid effect to the solid layer and hit play in order to check if the camera tracking was rock solid. Then I rotor brushed my hand to make the illusion perfect. To close the gaps at the borders, I created a new adjustment layer, applied a transform effect to it and increased the scale. And to add more realism to it, I included the cup's reflection. And this was the final result. Of course, your footage may differ from what I used, which means that you may encounter some other issues regarding rotoscoping or camera tracking. And this is why it's good to have a minimum of planning 
before you shoot to avoid such difficulties in post-production. In my example, it played into my hands that the background surface was dark, so I didn't have to worry about the shadows. But as I said before, please shoot multiple takes so that you have a better chance to get your perfect shot. In my coffee shot, I definitely needed more than one take. Friendly commentator, I hope this supplemental tutorial clarified some things for you. See you next time. Coffee. What?